I welcome everyone. Today we have another session of the core unit tools. We're at the tool number eight, actually. And um, well, my name is Juan. I'm the facilitator from sustainable ecosystem scaling and core unit from MakerDAO. And today we are with um, well with this uh, project um, called Superfluids. We're with uh, Mike. That's going to be explaining how how it works, uh, doing a quick demo, and um, and yeah, hopefully we can we can he can answer all our our questions. So, um, like, if you want to take it along. Thanks, Juan. Um, yeah, so my name is Mike. Um, I'm one of the founders here at Superfluid. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet uh, one of the teams that actually changed money fundamentally for the 21st century. Um, so hopefully we can uh, help uh, make your life a little bit easier on the admin side um, with automated recurring transfers on uh, on chain. So let me just try to share my screen here and present um, bring up the presentation. So do you guys see my screen? Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. So what is Superfluid? Um, Superfluid is an asset streaming protocol that fundamentally changes um, the way we experience money. Um, it's, it does so by enabling something that was not possible before on chain, uh, which is what we call digital native programmable cash flows. Um, digital native because we believe that they are probably the best way to um, move value in the era we are living in, which is the internet era, and programmable because we really care um, about programmability, especially in blockchain. We know how the difference between you know Bitcoin and Ethereum is, for example, and what kind of ecosystem that can trigger. So. They, the programmable cash flows as such, they are based on uh, what we call money streaming or streaming money. So moving assets uh, on chain every second in a very kind of frictionless, seamless way um, without requiring capital lockup. And I will you know, dive into that in a second. And again, fully programmable. So um, that's kind of what Superfluid is in a nutshell. Um, where do we come from and uh, why did we decide to even you know, get started with this? Um, so. The idea actually got started from this feeling that, you know, uh, if you think about it, you, you don't really work uh, for your DAO, for your employer, you know, uh, once a month, but you actually get paid once a month, right? So where is this disconnect? Why, why is it there? Um, and, you know, as services are flowing in an internet economy from, you know, provider to client, then we think that payments should work in the same way, sorry. So they should flow from that client to the provider in reverse uh, in real time. So we basically put together a small team about a year and a half ago to build what we are thinking is the next generation money. And uh, this is because the economy we live in today, especially Web3, uh, really deserves a more expressive money layer where we can couple service provision with payments, right? So that um, if I am using a service by the second, for example, you know, I'm watching Netflix, I would like to pay in the same way. So I don't have to pay upfront and I don't have to pay in, uh, you know, at the end of the service. So why do we think this is better than say credit card online payments? Well, first of all, in credit cards, they can charge you at any time. The moment you share the credit card details, um, you know, someone can pull money out of your wallet uh, straight away. Whether, uh, you know, the superfluid streams are push payments. So it's you that decide to push value to the service provider and you are in control. They cannot extract money or value from your wallet at their will. Um, so that's kind of a one strong uh, reason why we think they are a better solution. Then also there is kind of no delays. You really get paid in real time. As soon as you start the stream, the other will start receiving value um, as, as, as blocks go by in the blockchain. Um, and there is no unpayment risk, right? So for example, if you want a service mostly in, in the web free, uh, in the web free sector right now, you either get paid with a transaction before the stream, the service is provided or after the service is provided, or you might have an escrow account where you have to lock up the funds and then they get you know withdrawn by, by the service provider at the end. So with this streaming, um, if you are the service provider, you know if your customer is paying you every second, you don't have to wait until the end of the service provision to know that. And if you are the one paying, you can stop paying at any time and the service stops on the other side. So there's no uh, risk of not being paid. And more important than anything else, uh, there are no intermediaries in this. This is all smart contracts on open source software on the blockchain. So 
even if uh, superfluid as a team would disappear, potentially superfluid could live along uh, in, the, in, the, in the times to be. So let's try to understand what we mean by, by streams, especially, um, and, and try to understand the characteristics that define superfluid streams compared to other streaming solutions out there. So um, first of all, um, streams that are started with superfluid have no end date. So what does it mean? It, mean the, it means that you're not starting to stream, say, 100 die, and then the stream starts and stops um, immediately. The stream is open-ended, so you can only start streaming, say, 100 die per month, and you define the rate of the stream, and the stream goes on and on over time until you either change the amount or you cancel it yourself or you run out of funds. So it's a mental shift from what you have been thinking until today, right? So you always think of money as a finite amount. I send you 10K, I send you two die, right? So um, it's, it's a bit different idea that you either switch the stream on when you're receiving a service and off when you're not, uh, or there is simply no stream at all. So that's kind of the, the difference here. The other property is that there is a constant flow so if you say, I'm going to set a stream of 10,000 die per month, that will stay 10,000 die over time until you edit it with a transaction on chain. Or um, there is no way for us to do variable streams now. So it's kind of constant rate. Um, there's also no capital lockup because you don't have to lock your funds or your die into an uh, escrow account or into a smart contract in order to then stream them. And they are not withdrawn by the other receiver you know, over time, like for example, other streaming protocols do. Uh, in fact, this, the, the value that you transfer is um, transferred directly. So if I start sending Nadia 10,000 die per uh, month right now, every second she will receive a fraction of that and she will be able to start spending it as she receives it without having to withdraw it, for example. Uh, so we can say the streams are also interconnected. We can create a chain of streams where I stream 10,000 die per month to Nadia, Nadia streams 5K to Dennis and 5K to Juan. And that kind of can keep going in a chain for as many jumps as you want. Also, streams don't need to be forwarded in their entirety. So for example, you can say that you stream 10K per month to Nadia and Nadia can set any amount of streams that are outgoing to any other amount of wallets out there. So there is no constraint on, you know, you need to keep the same quantity from person to person. Um, also streams don't burn any gas. So the moving of funds over time doesn't burn gas on chain, which means that, you know, value is transferred seamlessly across all these wallets without burning any gas. The only moment where you need to burn gas is when you make a transaction. So in this case is when you open, you edit, or you cancel a stream. If you do any of this, it will be done with a transaction on change that changes the state of your stream. Um, how do we do all of this? Well, we do this with token wrapping. So we created a token standard that we call super tokens. It's just wrapping ERC20, not differently from how Aave does it, for example. So the, you, know, you have the A tokens, and in our case, we have super tokens. Basically, this wrapping allows us to add all these extra functionalities. So we see this as an announcement of the token as well. It's 100% compatible with ERC20 and ERC777. So um, you can do that with any, uh, any token on Ethereum. So to go back to kind of the big picture, um, these streams are available to you immediately, uh, for example, for salary streaming. But behind the streaming, engine of Superfluid, there is a whole programmability that allows anyone in the, in the developer ecosystem to build whatever comes to their mind. So they can build application with their logic. So, you know, we, are, we have built this as a modular programmable protocol for, uh, with the idea of DeFi running on streams eventually in the future. So there you can plug this into DeFi and you can run streams uh, across the whole Web3. Um, the only, Complexity here is that you know we are thinking always in terms of transactions, and transactions are instantaneous. Either they have happened or they didn't. And so when you program a superfluid application uh, or DAP, you need to think that streams are something that are continuous. They have their own life cycle, uh, which kind of 
during the application, during the, the life cycle of the stream, you need to understand how to handle it from a code and programming point of view. So there is a, you know, either stream is open, has been canceled, has been updated. So there's a lot more complexity that goes into that, but it makes the experience for the user a lot simpler. Um, so yeah, if anyone would ever want to dig into this, it's not the topic for today, uh, today's call, but if you're interested in understanding more about Superfluid protocol as an engine to build, uh, you know, decentralized applications. Um, the code base is quite simple, and the documentation is available at docs to superfluid.fine. And so, um, being us on Discord or you know just visit the docs, and you have all the information you will want there. Um, so, again, staying a bit uh, on the, kind of the protocol side, um, we really think that this can enable recurring payments for all, for Web three. And this is something that is a bit of a missing link um, to transition the world to a decentralized autonomous uh, machine that works uh, in a smooth way. And so we, we really think about Superfluid as something that bridges developers and users. So we thought about it for users. And so we created a dashboard, which uh, I will tell you more in a second, where you can control of your streams and you can open and close them, which is the major tool that Nadia and, and the core unit uh, growth has been using for sending streams um, to their team members. Then we thought about it for businesses, or maybe I should say DAOs, um, that you know, have a simple JavaScript SDK to integrate this in any web app very quickly. And also we thought about it mostly for developers with this kind of smart contract framework that I told you about. Now, let's dig in uh, the salary streaming, which is uh, why we, we are together today. So um, I think the best way forward is to show you an example. And then, you know, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know, but that's probably the easiest way. So we know that a lot of DAOs uh, we talk to um, have a fairly complex administration structure. So they keep their funds in a treasury, which is normally a nosy safe. And they have that as a multi-sig with several ledgers connected to it. Um, so when you ever, whenever you have to do a uh, stream to say 10, 20 team members, um, you have this senior, uh, you know, people in the, in the core units or, or the, or the DAO that have to spend half a day, uh, clicking on their ledger transacting, um, you know, making these transactions to pay everybody. Um, and that results in a bit of a headache because I don't know, sometimes the ledger needs to update the firmware. Sometimes the ledger doesn't connect to MetaMask. Um, and so it's kind of complex. And so what does it look like with Superfluid? You know, what does it look like with, uh, with streaming? So it's kind of simple. You, let's say you have 80K DAI, 80,000 DAI in your Gnosis safe, right? Uh, Multisig. All you will need to do here is you'll need to wrap those tokens into super tokens. So you, let's say you take 20K of that and you transfer them via a wrapping process into super DAI, which we are calling DAI access ticker. So basically you just upgrade the tokens, you take 20K and you upgrade it. The moment you have done that, you can see them in your wallet as DIAX uh, instead of DAI, and you can start streaming to any number of wallets that you can think of. So in this case, let's say we decide to send 8K to a team member, 6K to someone else, 9K to someone else, and 12K to someone else, right? It's four team members. So to do this, you will need to do four distinct transactions. Um, you might want to uh, add a name to the wallet with our address book features so that you know who you are sending to without having to read the and find out the address um, number every time. Um, but also you can see here that I have only wrapped 20K, but I'm sending 35. So how is that possible? The reality is in Superfluid, you don't need all the value from on a monthly basis to actually start the streams. You only need enough in super tokens to keep the streams running. So you can actually start streams on a monthly basis that are exceeding the total amount of tokens you have in, uh, in the wrapped form, as long as you keep that balance above zero as the streams go by. So, you know, in this case, if you were to stream to these 40 members for 35K per month, all you will need to do is to keep that DIAX balance above zero by just making one transaction every month or, or less to then wrap the tokens. And so if the token super balance is you know, above zero, you can let them run even for a year or even for five years 
and you'll never have to make a transaction again. When would you need a transaction? Well, if, you, if someone stops working and you need to stop the stream, you will need to cancel with a transaction. Um, if you want to you know, change the value, so for example, if you want to add the funds or change the value of the stream, right? Those are the only two reasons why you will need a transaction. Um, and so the other reason would be actually upgrading the, uh, the token, but that's this one for all. So you, once you upgrade the tokens, you don't need to change all the streams. So it's kind of one catch all. So just to recap a little bit what the benefits are for, for those who are running the admin there um, in the core units. Well, first of all, there's a lot less effort. Um, maybe Nadia can tell you more about it uh, for this trial in the last months or so. Basically, you can set the amount and the address for each team member and you're done. You don't have to really think about it every month and so on. So that's a lot easier. There is a lot less um, administration, as I was saying before. So you don't have to you know, request uh, the signatures of your multi-sig um, every month for every team member. So making all these bulk transactions to you know, tens or, or hundreds of users potentially. And also there is a lot reduced complexity because you can do all of that from your nosy safe. Uh, there is a super fluid app inside the apps of the Gnosis safe. So you can do it directly from there. You connect your wallet once and you have everything in one spot. The other big um, complexity reduction item is that if you have say 200 streams running to every team member and you need to just maintain them, you only need to refill your super token balance by dropping more die and you're done with that one transaction. Also, you can do that from the safe. So the tokens will never leave the safe that will be hold, uh, held in that account as well. So they are somewhat safer than if you had to transfer say to a MetaMask or, or something else. Also, we don't touch any of these tokens. So they are always in your wallet, either in the wrapped or unwrapped form. And they are wrapped in a one-to-one -one ratio as, as you probably know from other, other protocols like Aave. So how does this look like for the receiver? So let's say you are a team member now and uh, you know, you're receiving the funds. And uh, why is this interesting to you compared to you know, being paid every month? So here, let's say that you are receiving those 8,000 8, die per month, right? Um, and uh, it will appear just as an incoming stream of that value and your balance will start ticking up as soon as you start receiving it. So you can decide to, for example, take out 500 for expenses and uh, pay rent or you know, send those, those um, to some debit card that works with crypto. Uh, but also you can decide to invest them, for example, in a, in a DeFi protocol, right? Um, and so if you start doing that, you will see that you have outgoing strains now. So you can understand immediately by looking at this uh, that we have a 5,000 uh, positive balance right there. Um, and so your finances are a lot easier to understand than making all the calculation in an Excel file with all the transactions ever received and then seeing if you're making or losing money or every month, right? But actually that DeFi protocol right there, which is actually called Ricochet and is an application built on top of Superfluid on Polygon, what they do is they allow you to DCA, so dollar cost average um, into any asset. And in this case, they started with uh, the most important one like uh, Ethereum and Maker. So when you start sending a stream to that uh, DeFi protocol, it actually sends you back uh, the token of your preference, let's say Ether in this case. So this is fully automated. You don't have to do any transaction and it takes place without you having to touch your ledger. So in this case, you have more coming in because you're just investing. So you have a net uh, of 6,500 per month and you know you are making money. So. In this case, um, it, it, let's say you were actually losing money. Um, if you were to lose money here, it will also tell you the date when you would run out of funds. So that give, gives you a better picture of your financial situation than you know, having to run your bank accounts through, through accountants. So what's in it for you? Well, first of all, you get paid every second, which means you get paid much earlier than normally. And also you can put your capital to work much earlier. Um, you have pretty seamless personal finances. I'll show you in the dashboard how that is possible, but basically it's a, a lot simpler to understand than you know, having to go through Excel files. And then you have fully automated investing, which is also quite uh, interesting for DeFi because you can access a bunch of other assets uh, a lot earlier with your funds. So you know, let's say that uh, you are in week two of your payroll cycle 
and there is a big dip and you want to buy the dip, then in this case, you do have the funds with you and you don't have to wait uh, until you know, the, the money goes, the, the value goes up again. So that's what you get um, out of being paid in a stream. Um, so how do we do this? So we, we built uh, a visual dashboard, uh, which is both web and mobile, even though mobile is not working as well as we want it yet. Um, but um, you can you know, check it out at Outdoor Superfood on Finance. I'll, I'll show you around in a second. But the idea here was to put everything Superfood in one place. So even if you interact with uh, third-party applications like Ricochet Exchange, you see all the streams in the, in the dashboard anyway. So even if you do that on a third-party website, as long as it's a Superfood stream, you'll see it here. So it's kind of a central point for you to manage everything that is uh, related to streaming. So uh, let me just guide you through a quick demo here. So we are depositing, say, um, 500 die. So I just select the die and deposit it. This initializes initializing them as more contracts. Then we have to approve die to spend it from our wallet. This uh, should take a few seconds on on chain. There we go. So now we can deposit, and this is the wrapping process I was explaining before. So as as this goes through, uh, we can check it into um, our currencies tab, and so. Uh, here you see that, for example, we have 500 in our wallet, and as soon as they get deposited, they will be wrapped. There you go. So now they're wrapped into SuperDAI, and uh, that means that you can start streaming them to anybody. So let's send them to a test uh, wallet. Any address really will do. Um, and uh, let's say we send 100 per month, and we start the stream. So this is another transaction on chain where you need to actually uh, interact with your wallet. And as soon as this actually is processed, you'll see the counter ticking down because we are streaming out. So here you go. We are seeing the balance being drained in the stream at the moment. And uh, you, know, you can see that it's 100 per month that is going out. And you see that in February, we run out of funds if we don't do anything here on this, on this account. Uh, here you have more details. Um, you can name any, any wallet address. Uh, you can edit the stream amount. Here is the amount per second. This is a deposit for security. And uh, you can cancel the stream anytime with a transaction from the dashboard. So here, you know, I'm not gonna do it, but you, know, you can just uh, cancel it easily. And you can also share information. So there is a link at the bottom here where you can share a page, which is the streams details page to anyone in the web. There's no wallet required or any web free required here. So you can send this to your team members saying, we actually started paying you and you can check it here. Um, there is the streams tab here where you can you know, see everything that you're sending. There is activity history for you to know what's happened with your wallet. And there is the address book where you can store as many addresses as you need. You can export it and import it. We have no visibility on that address book. It's a completely local storage. So privacy preserving for, for you. Um, so this is our dashboard. Um, there's a, uh, um, I don't know if I covered everything, but I'd like to now start taking questions and see if uh, we are able to answer all of them. Nice, that, that's, uh, that's great, Mike, thanks. I have a bunch of questions. I don't know if anyone has any questions and they want to go first or... Yeah, I got an Eli5 question real quick. Uh, so this looks like you would have to start streaming on the first of the month because if I if I got to pay my bills by the by the first of November, you're gonna to have to start streaming. And I'm getting say I work for the risk core unit, and I'm getting ten thousand die a month. You're gonna it, it looks pretty slow to be streaming ten thousand die. That's my first part of my question. Second part is the wrapping part. Is that centralized? So are you guys pretty much just running a centralized server to do all of this? Uh, and how do I unwrap it? Do I have to go to, uh, you know, my favorite uh, app, uh, Uniswap, or do I have to stay here in this uh, environment? Yeah, so to start, um, no, you don't need to start on the first of the month. Um, it's just that you can start at any time, but the difference needs to come as a one-off transaction, right? So let's say that I start streaming to you today, right? And you only have two days left. Um, so I just need to make my math and understand the amount I would have sent you in the stream over the month, right? Um, so that's the only complexity around that. Um, I, some, some DAOs would prefer to, you know, start the streams the same day they do payroll just because it's easier. Others uh, 
probably decide to wait for the beginning of the month just because it doesn't make a big difference and they can always top up the delta in a you know one-off transaction as they did uh, so far so i don't see that as a burden um on them i'm sure that everyone has the interest to get all your 10k to you by the end of the month so that payroll payday is is respected to some degree and to the idea of slow um i'm not sure i think you should try like when you see the balance ticking up every second, like 10K per month sounds to me like more than $250 per day, right? So that means that you see that money coming to you every day. It's a kind of a, a sweet feeling than that one day where you get your 10K in your, in, your, in your wallet, right? So you can imagine that you can use them. So you, you're winning because companies used to, to do that also for cash flow reasons, right? So they can get an advance on their workforce for 30 days on the currency right and in this case you get to have the cash um, available to you so you can make use of that cash flow earlier right so that's where the benefits are um for your second question maybe fran do you want to say something uh yeah sure uh hi everyone i'm fran one of the other co-founders um been listening listening in here no we're absolutely not running a centralized server i would be terrified if we were uh, we're uh, no, we're we're running through smart contracts, like uh, you know, like I think uh, everyone else, uh, you know, everything else that we love in DeFi. It is there is a contract that that holds all the funds, and that's where you would go to downgrade the tokens. So, the upgrade and downgrade function uh, are both on the same uh, contract. It's very similar as to when you use WETH. So you know, when you use WETH, you have to wrap it, and then you can go and unwrap it. Um, Uniswap has built in the wrapping, but it's actually being handled by uh, the WEF contract. And the same happens with Superfluid. There's a fairly easy to find a green and red button to upgrade and now rig on our dashboard. And otherwise you can always do it through a polygon scan. Um, it, it's fairly easy. We, we actually have a guide on how to downgrade because some people can't find the red button. But uh, you know, we really we have a very big red button, so generally people can uh, can find that. Yeah. So adding to that, um, you might not need to downgrade, um, and uh, we believe that you know more and more applications will make use of super tokens in the future. So just to you know answer to that question, um, there is this application uh, built on Superfluid called Ricochet Exchange. How this works is you stream tokens to them. So in this case, you don't downgrade at all. You send the super die to Ricochet. Um, and by sending the super die, what happens is, um, this is also decentralized, is completely smart contracts on chain. You can look at what happens is they just go and uh, go to an exchange on your behalf every now and then, and they swap, they downgrade the token for you. They swap that to the asset you want to purchase. And then every, let's say 30 minutes or one hour, they send that to you uh, in a distribution, which is also a feature of Superfluid, which I didn't dive into today. So in this case, there is no unwrapping whatsoever, and you get the token that you're interested in directly in your wallet. So I believe Nadia is doing this, but you know there might be others that are doing this. The, good, the cool thing about this exchange is that since um, the MakerDAO growth core unit decided to uh, use streaming uh, to, to actually pay some of their team members, they decided that Maker uh, was one of the top tokens to add to the system. So now they allow all of you to, uh, you know, uh, DCA into Maker tokens uh, directly with your super tokens without having to, to actually uh, withdraw. Cool. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah just to nice. for the sake of complexity, um, um, for the sake of uh, you know completing this. It's not the only application, right? Uh, it's one of the few applications live. Um, there is also Creator, which is a Web3 Patreon, where you stream DIEX and that gets redirected 90%, say, to um, an artist, like as a Patreon, and the Creator uh, developers take a cut of 5% of that stream. Um, and then the, the Creator can actually send a social token reward back to the donor on the Patreon, right? So this is something that is coming up. Uh, there is also another app called Drip, where you can stream to them, um, and you stream basically to a smart contract. Uh, because um, th the idea here is that you know there is an influencer or some sort of uh, marketing uh, 
well-known person that creates a referral marketing campaign, right? And um, the referral marketing campaign um, advocate, let's say, creates an NFT um, and a referral link. And they share this referral link to anybody. And everyone who signs up to a service via that link would actually start streaming um, to a contract that deflects 90% of the service provider, right? So that, you know, you get to, to pay the service provider of that specific referral marketing campaign. And then 10% is kind of royalties or, or awards that go to the referrer that created the referral marketing campaign, but not directly to his address, but to an NFT, because NFTs can also receive streams, right? And if the NFT changes hands, then the stream is automatically shifted to the new owner. So in this case, you can go in the secondary market like OpenSea and sell that NFT in an, for an advance of cash. So if you know you're generating 10K per month, you can sell that for like 30 or 50K and get the cash in advance. And that's the other idea here. So just to show you there is an ecosystem around it that might not require that downgrading you were talking about. That's, that's great, Mike, thanks. Um, I'm actually, just a message for everyone, we will have um, the guys from Ricochet a couple of weeks from now, so uh, we might want to save the questions for them. But I, I was wondering if you could uh, Ricochet die to you, so change die X for die, and you'd stop needing to unwrap the die if that was, that was a possibility. Not um, yet unfortunately not. Not even, no, not even in the pipeline because, you know, you can see Superfood as a protocol, but also as an asset standard, like a new asset standard. Um, we really need to add functionalities to the ERC-20 standard for streaming to work. Um, if we don't have the wrapping, then streams wouldn't be possible, uh, so to say. So we didn't find a way to make the math and the mechanics work with ERC-20. Um, so, you know, if there is anyone who has ideas around how to do that, we are definitely going to listen, but um, it's not that simple. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been more than a year we're thinking about it and we didn't find a solution yet, but, you know, never say never. Makes sense. How about the, the, the price or yeah, the, the gas that needs to be used to, to wrap slash unwrap? Uh, is it something that's relatively lightweight or? Yeah, that depends, um, you know, depends on the network and depends on the timing. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes uh, some networks can be very congested. So um, even on Polygon where, you know, the streams are running quite smoothly, uh, there has been situations where the gas prices have gone up, but at the same time, you know, on all these L2s and side chains, it's very manageable. I think Ethereum mainnet can be tricky um, for many reasons, especially when you look at um, gas prices, um, you know, around uh, some massive event where you have liquidations events or you have some clogging of the chain. So around those events, for sure, the gas uh, can become prohibitive even just for sending normal transactions. In, in which uh, chain slash uh, side chains are you guys on? So at the moment we are live on Polygon and XDAI, which we've been treating very much as a test bed for making sure that our public beta would be okay. Um, the protocol now has been out for um, seven months, eight months now. So we have been looking at, we've been audited and we've been debugging any possible issues. So we hope to launch on L2s and uh, even on mainnet, but the reality is um, we don't know if would we would actually be used very much on mainnet because a lot of uh, what is recurring payments seems to be uh, more suited for relapse or you know so side chains. So the main issue we have is that all DAO treasuries are somewhat into Ethereum mainnet, um, and uh, you know OGs like us and you are probably married to it to some degree. Um, while you know the the simplicity of managing transactions on on L twos and side chains is so much better than going through the the gas wars of of the Ethereum chain, so we don't even know if we are needed on mainnet. So we let the, the community decide. So we were not deploying ourselves to Polygon and XDAI. It was a community deployment. Um, we're expecting the community to deploy the protocol everywhere is needed. Um, so, you know, um, there are some tweaks we need to do if we go on mainnet just because we would need to have some 
safety features in place to make sure that if there is a gas war and for say 48 hours, you can't process transactions because the nodes are clogged, um, the system is still up and running in a, in, a, in a healthy state. So that's the only added uh, security feature we will need. Makes sense. Uh, and, and how about the tokens that you can stream? Is it any ERC you can just wrap it and, and send it? Or do you guys need to whitelist them? Or No, so anyone can deploy the whole protocol as anyone can deploy the token wrapper. So, you know, you can, there is a guide on how to do that on our docs. Um, if you have a token that you want to stream, you can just deploy a wrapper and then you can uh, see the token on our dashboard as well because we allow you to import it by address. So you can just import the token by address and start streaming it from the dashboard. Of course, you can also do that via console if you want to, you know, uh, do that with Solidity. It's kind of kind of easy to, I think it's, it's one line of our SDK to start a stream. So Nice. Does anyone else have any any other questions, or or should I keep going? Yeah, I have I have some questions, but I'm not sure if they're uh, if if you're the one to answer them, Mike. Uh, it's it's more related to how we're going to make this work within the DAO, right? Because I'm super excited by this, and I see a lot of benefits. But also, if I just look at the let's say the the, the payment flows that we're in as a team, then I think we're only going to have all the benefits that we just mentioned. If let's say all the nodes in our payment process uh, start using this, right? Because we do have quite some transactions, not only between, let's say, the team um, vault and, and the team members, but also uh, from the team vault to other, let's say, payment providers or, yeah. So that's one one thing. I'm just trying to think of a, a way to coordinate this within the, within the DAO to try and maximize the, the benefits. But yeah, that's not something for now, I guess. The second question I had, it's more like an open question. Uh, are there any, let's say, learnings or considerations uh, with regards to taxes that you can share with us, uh, specifically on streaming salaries? Yeah, so on your first question, um, you can have both in the sense that, for example, in our dashboard, we allow also one-off transactions as one of the things that you can send out. Um, so you're not tied and married to streams. You can still keep your finite transactions going to suppliers of different sorts. But um, as this can be used with team members, it can also be used with suppliers of any sort, right? As long as they are happy with it, which is not uh, for granted, but can also be used among CUs and to transfer budget uh, across different parts of MakerDAO. So, you know, you can stream out to your team and then maybe the account that is streaming out receives funds in a stream too. So there is also no uh, reloading or no wrapping anymore because the tokens are coming in already wrapped and we can go out. So there is a lot of administration optimization, I would say that you can do there. And uh, I think that would be kind of the next step. You know, if, if the demand is from the team members that really want to be paid in this way to remove of the friction, then that can escalate upward all the way to the treasury, where you have the whole treasury then, you know, streaming to all the CUs, and then the CUs streaming down to all the suppliers they have. Um, but you know, we are happy to help you figure it out if you know if it would make sense and what would be the complexity of pulling that off. So you know, hit hit me up on Discord uh, or Telegram. I'll I'll post the the handle here in the chat, and then we'll we'll try to sort it out. Um, the second item is taxes. Um, so there, there is, it's basically an uncharted territory. Like, uh, you know, if, even if we talk to the government and we say that we want to stream them our taxes, um, they don't really know where to start. And, you know, it's kind of hard to find a decision maker that tells us how to do this black and white. So the best we could do so far is to stick to the rules that are existing today. So basically what we have done is we virtualize the stream as if it was a monthly transaction. And then we take it from there. Um, this because there is no transaction that we can log into an accounting software. Um, so we need to virtualize it. So um, here, the only question really is the cadence, right? Um, so does the auditor or the government or the tax authority want to see a transaction every second, wants to see a transaction every hour, wants to see a transaction every day, wants to see a transaction every month, uh, is it okay with a transaction per year? These are questions we didn't have answers to, right? And it's very jurisdiction dependent anyway. 
Um, so the best we could do, and you know, we came up, up we came up with this with our accountant, uh, um, is to basically have a virtualization where the value transfer from A to B over a month time is virtualized into one transaction of the same value. And uh, in terms of value of the token transfer, we look at the daily average value of the token. So imagine we have daily transactions, then we sum that up as one value that we stream uh, in a month time. Uh, those are the questions we, you know, we, the solutions we're putting in place uh, so far. Um, for contractors and freelancers and you know, third party uh, entities, it's a lot easier than employees. But at the end of the day, uh, for employees in different jurisdiction, uh, most of the time, and this is again, very jurisdiction specific, um, you need to stream them the net amount as if you would do a bank transfer of the net amount. And you would still need to pay the taxes probably in fiat, probably to the local tax authority as you do now already. So, you know, it's just for them, uh, the difference is you stream the net amount on Ethereum versus streaming them, sending them the fiat amount to the bank account. Uh, but the taxes you would have to pay for employment tax are exactly the same. Um, so I think as long as we comply with the existing regulation, uh, it's going to be fine. Um, you know, I would, I would consider this a new primitive. And so we will need new regulation, I hope. Um, and the best we can do is, you know, write it together with the regulators. Um, again, not legal or financial advice here or tax advice, but, you know, this is the best we could do internally. And uh, we are trying to arm ourselves with the right tax advisors to, to sort this out. Awesome. Thanks. Nice. That, that helps. Yeah, totally. Yeah, just, so we can just write, Mike said one, that this is fine for taxes and, and we're good. Well, I mean, there's no one that would ever tell you that, but it's also not true, not untrue. You know what I mean? Um, there is there is no regulation on streaming uh, because there was no streaming until a year ago. <laughs> so we need to to pave the way. And I think complying with the existing one is the only thing we can do, which uh, makes sense. One more thing here, Dennis. Um, one headache you might think of is accounting, right? Um, so. Uh, I know Nadia has a very extensive and methodic way of doing accounting for, for the growth CU. Um, and I've seen the type of structure of the Excels that she normally makes without all the data, of course. But um, we have uh, been working to create a software tool that um, you feed in the addresses you're using and a time framework, say like July, 2021. And it tells you uh, the streams value that you send to different wallets um, in a virtualized fashion. So you can take that and import it in an accounting tool or into a spreadsheet. So what you will see is all the counterparties that those wallets have been dealing with on streaming and uh, all the value that was transferred uh, virtualized on a monthly basis. So that is, um, I think, again, something we're trying to see if it's best practices or if it makes sense at all. And we have an accountant to help us with that as well. But the fact that we have this tool that removes the need for you to make the math manually is that's something that should simplify a lot the admin internally. That's, that's awesome. Let's, uh, let's talk later, Mike. I, from SES, we're trying to actually build tools to help other core units and there might be some, some, yeah, synergies here. So, um, I, I don't know if there are any questions. I have one that's a, a bit of a different topic. But I want to touch a bit more on the um, on the programmable part of the um, of the of the money. So one of the things that uh, that we're exploring and researching about is how to how to make governance control uh, cash flows directly. Um, so we could, for example, for example, put a cap uh, which could be uh, absolute or relative. And then uh, with, within that cap, you could say, okay, um, these core units are going to get this percentage. Um, if this is higher than this, or if there's this amount of die in the market, you will get this amount. Um, and then ideally, there's this um, fluid uh, plutocracy where, where actually MKR holders can, can move their vote around and have a direct impact or influence on the on the flow uh, and that would help us a lot or, or I think any DAO actually 
on on dealing with budgets and, and how to move uh, funds around is this is something that you guys are looking into and, and eps uh, how, how is it going and, and any comments on that yeah so um one of our community members have been trying to integrate superfluid with dow house uh, where you can set some minions that do this. Um, the reality is that it's not really making the most out of Superfluid because it's using streams as disconnected rather than interconnected. And so you basically need to set a budget for your stream and it kind of ties you back to that capital lockup um, type of thinking, um, which is also probably budgeting in a way. Um, what we think would be better is um, if we would build new dApps uh, or we could integrate with existing governance dApps that would then trigger streams. So, you know, we, we are definitely talking to, for example, Aragon about this idea of recurring payouts uh, for the community. Um, we have been just starting the conversation, which is just a brainstorming um, with, you know, all the DAO and DAO tools or infrastructure, if you will. Um, there is a hackathon upcoming um, that is uh, basically started by Aragon that is called uh, the DAO Global Hackathon. Um, and so hopefully there we will see a lot of actors trying to integrate Superfluid, you know, streams to governance. Um, but, you know, if you have idea, ideas, one of what you need in practice, that makes it a lot more tangible. And then we can wrap some minds together to actually get it started and start building this. Um, I still feel that integrating with existing solutions is probably faster than building something from scratch. So, you know, maybe just let us know which teams we should talk to and, and try to pull this off together. Yeah, right. So what we're thinking a bit, just to, to give a, I don't want to go very much into detail, but it's, it's a bit like a river or maybe the opposite of a river where you have like a, a bucket or a general budget in the top, and then you can create streams going down. And those streams can be modified based on percentage or, or, or absolute numbers and, and this, and these delegates or MKR holders would be able to actually di divert uh, the funds based on uh, whatever they think it's best at the moment. So it could be, okay, this core unit might need more funds because of this, or, or, or there might be this emergency, so we should get a buffer, or we should burn more MKR, so let's divert um, uh, more DAI into, into that, um, well, smart contract, I guess. So that's a bit on the lines we're thinking. Um, it's still very, very exploratory and very early on in the process. So we are, we're still uh, figuring things out. Yeah, I, I do have this vision of, you know, um, this living organism that MakerDAO is, where you have the different entities or core units and the treasury that are interconnected one another with streams, right? And you see these pulses of value going across the organism, very much like our bloodstream works or you know our, our internet works uh, with information right so um i don't know how far we are from that vision but that's kind of the vision we have for superfluid um to become this kind of new tool that allows value to flow seamlessly across the economy right being it an organization or or the world web free so i'm more than happy to you know sit down with you and have our team looking into how we can make this happen um if it makes uh life a lot easier also in terms of you know value transfer, then why not, right? Uh, one of the things that you can do already today is to, for example, set a budget or a treasury, and you have a smart contract where you have I don't know, a hundred k die locked up, and uh, you have some recurring, um, let's say, trigger or a workflow or, or some script that every half an hour checks how many tokens different people have and adjust the stream ratio. Um, based on that, for example, so that if you have like five five members, right, with the same amount of tokens, then one member transfers all of his tokens to one of the others, then the stream would rebalance based on on the ownership of tokens. But this is something that needs to be done with some infrastructure for now, uh, probably even off chain um, to make it happen. So we'll need to look into how to make that decentralized and robust in a in a yeah, you know, fully disintermediate, yeah. So we need to find a way to, to make that happen, but it can be done. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have, on, on the superfluid side, we wouldn't need any strong innovation to make it happen today. Sounds great. Yeah, let's, let's definitely keep talking. Does anyone else have any, any other questions? Mm, uh, it's not a question. It's just a comment for Dennis that, well, I'm receiving like, 
the way how core units receive the budget, it could be by a stream by the DSS uh, contract. So I'm receiving the stream from like on mainnet from the DAO and uh, actually not not uh, like I'm paying through Superfluid just to a few of, of the contractors because not all of them wanted to receive their their uh, their payment in that way. For example, like there are some that are using a, a Coinbase account to receive the DAI. So it doesn't work in Polygon. It, of course, it doesn't receive a stream. So I, I'm, I'm not including them. But the others are are very happy because they are also like using a die on Polygon, and at the same time they are receiving like not at the end of the month the the payment, but just like in streams every day. So it's it it's like a a, a prep perk for them. I'm also receiving my 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 payment uh, by streams uh, on Superfluid, and and it's. Like from both sides, like uh, me as paying all the for, uh, all the payments for the contributors, it's it it has been like at the beginning, it's it's kind of I don't know a little bit complicated because you have to like decide what how much of the funds are you going to send to Polygon and then uh, to wrap into the superfluid token, but then uh, it's 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 much more easier. Like uh, uh, on, on a monthly basis, I, I have seen that how much easier it's for me because I'm not thinking about paying to these people that are receiving the, the streams. And from a user perspective, I love it. Like I really love it. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to try it out because now I'm like embarrassed. I, 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 it's like another completely experience and another paradigm when you are receiving your payments on a daily basis and not just at the end of the month so yeah i recommend i recommend superfluid to to, to yeah. all other units to try it out awesome yeah so to clarify you actually receive funds as a core unit also in the form of a stream so the, the let's say the the individual who is doing those transactions you actually convinced him or her to also set up a stream instead of the manual transactions well i'm receiving uh, the budget in streams because uh, um, like we as maker we we can decide if we want we as maker now we as a core unit we can decide if we want to receive the budget like on a manual payment that's once every month or once every x amount of time through an executive vote or we can also receive the budget through streams but that's that's different from superfluid that's on mainnet and that's something uh, that it's uh, comes from the protocol itself. Uh, after I receive the budget, I migrate some of those funds to Polygon and wrap uh, the funds into SuperDAI. And I started the streams to the contributors that told me they want to receive streams instead of the like end of the month payment. Like yeah, if so you want to try it out, Dennis, let, let me know. I can I can like guide you and show awesome. you how, how we'll we are do. doing. Yeah, yeah. It's very it. flexible. It's Thanks. very flexible though, Dennis. So if you have like you know a bunch of new new uh, team members that only have a Coinbase wallet and want to keep receiving that on their Coinbase wallet until we integrate with Coinbase, um, you can only do that with transactions. Um, but you know you can have a few of them that have the stream, and that becomes three less transactions for you to do every month, for example, or 10 less transactions to do every month. Um, I think for the administration side of the sender, it's a little bit better, but for the receiver, it's a lot better because I think that that experience of receiving your salary every second is kind of addictive. You see your numbers ticking up all the time. So some of the people that we started paying in a stream in our own team, uh, you know, kind of open the dashboard every two hours to check if the value was going up um, and it's a different feeling than you know receiving that as a one-off. I think it kind of makes you feel a bit more appreciated for the daily effort you put in, right? Because um, it's not one big pat in the back at the end of the month. It's more a lot of pats in the backs every day uh, for the work you do. 
I, I thought Nadia wanted to share her referral link with everyone. Are there are there any other? We're almost at the top of the hour. I don't know if there are any any other questions for Mike and Francesco. There's one thing maybe that Mike didn't mention. Um, you never get paid late. Also, like that's an important thing, right? Like if you get paid once a month, maybe that the payday comes two or three days late, right? Maybe the person that has to make the payments is sick or whatever, and the payday comes a bit late. With streams, you get paid every second, so you're never getting paid late. And that, you know, the the frustration you experience when you're paid late. I don't know if anybody's had that experience, but you know, I I had in, in Italy where I'm from, it happened all the time. Uh, and you don't have that at all. So, you know, on the receiver side, that, that part is, is pretty liberating. Yeah, only in the uh, real world does that happen. Uh, and I might have missed this because I might have spaced out for a second. I was looking at your documents, the, cons the constant flow agreement. Would it, would it be easier for somebody from a core unit that's not technical to uh, put this together? Or is that something that's just basic on the um, uh, on your dashboard? So the constant flow agreement is uh, what we are using to describe streams, right? So you can open that from the dashboard directly with a click, um, or you can use the console or you can use our JavaScript SDK. So if you're not technical, um, you can both open and receive streams and forward them and stop them uh, from the dashboard. Um, it's quite straightforward. Um, it's at app.superfluid.finance if you want to check it out. Um, I don't know if this answered your question or you had some more technical angle to it. No, no, I was I just wondering, so if I have like five employees, I know we're running out of time, but if, if I have five employees and I needed to distribute, you know, 40% to this one guy that does more, 30% to this girl that does more than the other three, uh, how easy it is to do? Yeah, it's, it's super easy. Uh, all you need is Brave or a browser, uh, right? This one, and you just need to come here uh, connect your wallet with uh, MetaMask or something else. And then all you need to do is you, you know you deposit some, some DAI. And then once you have deposited this, um, you can just start streaming to them uh, in a ratio that you decide. So it's, it's quite straightforward. Um, I don't think it's going to be quite technical at all. And if you have an issue, you top this bubble here and you chat to me and Fran and anyone else in the team uh, with a problem and we'll try to solve it straight away. So it shouldn't be it shouldn't be too hard to pull it off. Um, this the dashboard has been thought of as a non Web three enabled user. Um, so you know anyone should be able to potentially do this, um, and it's quite straightforward. I think also Nadia might be able to guide you through eventually. Um, yeah, what, what's your address by the way? Give me your address. I'm gonna send you a stream right now. Uh, give me a new address. Don't don't expose your real one. <laughs> To who? To, to me? Yeah, anybody. Oh, darn. I, I just signed that on my MetaMask. It's all right, man. No worries. Oh, good. Uh, so, yeah. I thought that maybe the uh, core unit, um, the facilitator had to, uh, uh, you know, uh, work with the constant flow agreement and set it up a certain way, um, you know, but uh, yeah, it looks like it's pretty self-explanatory looking at your dashboard there. So good. Thank you. Yeah, if you ever get stuck um, somewhere, just let us know and we'll we'll try to help. Um, we have been quite helpful with anyone who has tried out so, so far because most of it were in new use cases. So happy to hop on a on a quick call eventually and guide you through. Um, I don't think it will require any any technical understanding of the blockchain. Nice. This was great, Mike and Francesco. Thanks. Um, so one of the last questions I'd like asking uh, for the people watching the recording, what's the best way to, to find you or to contact you uh, for any kind of uh, questions or concerns? Yeah, so I think the best way to reach out to us is always the same for all these beautiful projects on, uh, on blockchain, which is on our Discord. Um, so let me just print the link here on, uh, you should see my screen here. So yeah, so find us at discord.superfluid.finance. Um, if you can't find that, um, just go to our website at superfluid.finance and look for Discord and you're gonna have a link to get straight there. 
Um, if you are looking for Fran and me, um, we are Mike Superfluid in our Discord and Fran Superfluid in our Discord. Otherwise, you can reach out to me uh, directly via email at Michele at superfluid.finance. Um, so that um, is straight straight ahead. Um, maybe if, if you really don't find us, just tweet to us at superfluidhq and someone from our team will, will reach out to you. Nice. And are you guys going to be in uh, Lisbon for all these events that are coming soon? Yeah, we didn't get a ticket to the conference, um, but I think we will be there nevertheless. Nice. You probably are already there, right? You're around. Some some of you might be there already enjoying some sunshine. Yeah, I heard that the, some teams are doing their offsite there uh, to, to actually kill two birds with one stone. All right. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if you have any anything else uh, before before leaving. Any any last words? No, I think uh, you know we always admired Maker for basically building money for the 21st century uh, in the sense that it is digital and native, right? And it's algorithmic and not um, government based uh, to some degree. Um, I think it would be cool to build together some of the next building blocks. So if we can, for example, build a world where DAOs can be efficient and effective in their administration, that would be pretty amazing to, to us. Um, or also if we can empower individuals with this advanced cash flow by paying them every day instead of you know paying them at the end of a hard work month um, could make it um, a better world to some degree, right? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm open to work with any and all of you uh, who have any ideas on how to make this happen. We are open source, fully open source protocol, right? Uh, we are basically a community. So that's why I'm telling you to come to our Discord is because you know everyone in our community would be happy to jump on to a new quest uh, to build some new tools, uh, for example, for, for the SEAS um, core unit. So yeah, just uh, if you want to have any ideas to, to build together, we are totally open to that and just reach out to us. We are pretty easy to, to find. Sounds great. So Mike and Francesco, thanks for coming. It was really great having you. And yeah, we'll, we'll be in contact soon. Thanks to you guys. Have a good one.